Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a really easy necklace and pair of earrings today using some of the products I got in my most recent BB Craft order. In case you're not familiar, BB Craft is an online craft supply store. They have lots of beads and findings and jewelry making supplies. If you have a channel and you have at least 100 subscribers, you can apply to be in their YouTube program and get products and do tutorials for them. I'll post a link in the description box below so you can check that program out if you're interested. They offer free shipping for orders over $25. I have a coupon code. It's Teresa10, and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below. It'll save you 10% off your order if you make an order with them. I'll put links to all the BB Craft products I'm using in the description box below, along with links to the other tools and supplies I'm using, as many as I can find. And I'll also link the BB Craft homepage in the description box below. And here I've got the round natural dendritic chohua jasper beads i don't know if i'm saying any of that right but that's what it looks like to me <laughs> they're eight millimeter in here i've got the honey handy electroplated glass beads they're pearl luster plated they're black faceted barrel beads and they're eight millimeter in here i've got some bead caps from my stash in here i've got some findings i went two of these filigree floral links i got a pack of their Sunny Clue is the brand, and I got a box of 60 of them, and they were 10 styles and four different colors, and I'm using these two here today. I've got a lobster clasp in there, a couple of pieces of chain, a piece of extender chain. Uh, I've got a little black bicone that I'm going to hang off the extender chain as a dangle, and I've got a ball head pin in there that I'm going to make that with. I've got some jump rings that I got from BB Craft. I've got two two by two crimp tubes. And I'm supposed to, yeah, I've got two wire guardians in there. I thought I left my wire guardians out, but they're in there. Uh, and here I've got what I'm going to use for my earrings. I've got two of the barrel beads, two of the jasper beads, some bead caps, two of the same links, uh, two ball head pins and two eye pins, and two ear wires lever back ear wires. I'm going to be using my soft flex feeding wire and fine and this is 21 strand and this is the satin silver color but you can use whatever color you have. I I'm always say once you get all the beads on there you're not going to be able to see the color of the wire anyway unless you're wanting to use the wire as part of your design which you can do but I don't I very often do that so for what I'm doing today it doesn't really matter about the color. Uh, I'm going to be using, I've got my bead stoppers. I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers, both pairs of my crimping pliers, and both pairs of my cutters. You don't have to have all those tools. I have accumulated a lot of tools over the years, and, and I have them and I use them, but you don't have to have them. Like, for, for instance, you don't have to have the tweezer nose pliers. Uh, you don't have to have two pairs of bent chain nose pliers. You certainly don't have to have two pairs of crimping pliers. I use one for crimping and one for to tuck in the little tails when I cut off uh, the little burr that's left when I cut off wire. Uh, I do recommend that you have two different pairs of cutters, though, a different pair for your bead string and wire and a different pair for your craft wire and head pins and eye pins and things because if you use the same pair of cutters, they will dull very quickly and you won't be able to cut your bead stringing wire with them. And I have my little New Orleans shot glass. I'm going to put my wires in when I cut them off. I know that sounds like a lot of tools for a very simple little pair of earrings and uh, a necklace, but it is going to be really, really simple. So hold on, I'll get some of my beads poured out and I'll be back. Okay, I've got part of my necklace strung up here because I didn't want y'all to have to wait while I strung all these beads. And, and I'm going to show you my pattern and then I'm going to string the other side of it. I've got the side and the focal strung up here, and then I'm going to do the other side. So I've got, I need to put another bead cap, or another bead stopper on this, or I'm going to drop everything everywhere. <laughs> so I've got, started out here with three of my Jasper beads, with bead caps around them and 11 O's. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all when I did the supplies, I'm using these little silver 11 O's to space out the beads. I forgot about those. So I've got three of my Jasper beads with bead caps around them and 11 O's between them. And I've got 11 O's between all these beads. 
and y'all know I can't do anything without putting bead caps around everything. So <laughs> I've got three of my Jasper beads with bead caps and 11 O's between them. I've got one barrel bead with bead caps. <clears throat> I've got five, uh, yeah, five more of my Jasper beads with bead caps around them. I've got one more barrel bead. I've got three more of my Jasper beads. And then I've got five barrel beads that's going to be my focal. So, if I get it all in the screen here. So, that's going to be one side of my necklace and the focal part. Now, I'm going to string up this other side exactly like this side. And when I get it strung up, I'll be back and we'll crimp it. So, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got my necklace all strung up now and I'm going to crimp it. So, I'm going to take my... Uh, crimp tube and put it on here. I'm going to put my wire guardian on. I'm going to take my crimping pliers. I'm going to squish my little wire guardian a little bit. And these are the crimping pliers I use for crimping. I like these. They crimp really well. They've helped my crimping a whole lot since I got them. Now I'm going to take Go my wire and go down the other channel of the wire guardian. And I'm going to go back through my crimp tube. And I'm going to hold my wires apart and make sure they're not crossed in my crimp tube. Because I want each little wire to land in its own little channel when I crimp it here. And if they're crossed, they won't do that. So and make sure there's no wire sticking out up here where my little wire guardian is. I'm going to take my crimping pliers and I'm going to go on that part that has the tooth. I'm going to lay the tooth on top. I'm going to squeeze. And that puts each little wire in its own little channel there. Now I'm going to go in the part. There's three circular parts up, up there. And I'm, the middle one is the one for the 2x2 two two crimp tube, which is what I'm using. So I'm going to lay my crimp in there. And I'm going to squeeze. And I'm going to go down to the one, for the one millimeter crimp tubes and squeeze again, just to give it a little extra security. And I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off the extra wire. I'm going to go to this other end here, and I've got got it still attached to the spool. I usually do that. It kind of keeps from wasting so much of the wire. I'm going to cut off, make sure I leave myself enough to crimp with, because it's very frustrating if you don't have enough wire to crimp with, and you're trying to struggle. Now I need to make sure my bead, like see this bead cap's got off here. <laughs> I need to make sure my bead caps are all laying on against my beads the way I want them to be. Now I'm going to take my other crimp tube and put it on here. And I cut myself off way too much wire, but <laughs> like I said, I, I don't want to have too little and try to struggle to crimp this. I should not have cut this much off though. But So now I'm putting my uh, wire guardian on here. I'm going to squish it in just a little bit. Now I'm going to come down the other side of my wire guardian. And if I have enough of this wire left when I'm done, I'll save it and use it for something. Sometimes when I need some, a little, I make a little short section of something, or you can use it for tassels or something like that. So I'm going to pull my wire through and like I did on the other side, make sure my wires are not crossed. And on this side, I like to go through a bead or two because it gets my hands out of the way because it's harder to crimp on this side with the beads in the way and your hands in the way and all that. So I'm going to go through a bead or two if I can get through here. And I know I can. This bead's plenty big enough. I just need to make sure when I go through this little filigree bead cap that I'm getting through the right hole because... There's lots of holes in these little filigree bead caps, and it's real easy to get through the wrong hole, which is what my wire seems to be wanting to do. 
So I'm going to just fiddle with it here for a minute until I can get it through that center hole. There we go. So now I'm going to make sure my wires are not crossed. And I'm going to hold on to my wire garden, guardian and pull my wire through. Now I want to make sure that I don't have any slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either, because if it's too tight it won't drape well. And I'm, but I want to make sure all my bead caps are sitting against my beads like they're supposed to be. And I think it looks like they are. And I usually leave it kind of coiled up like this, and that keeps it from... Uh, being too straight and too stiff when you crimp it. So now I'm going to take my crimping pliers again and go on the part with the tooth again. And I'm going to try to turn this around here so I can see what I'm doing. And go and take that part with the tooth and lay it on top. And squeeze. Now I'm going to go into that second part of the circular parts there and I'm going to squeeze in and I'm going to go down a little bit more and squeeze some more and I'm going to tug that's good so now I'm going to cut off this extra wire and I don't really think that's enough to save I don't think I could do anything with that little piece of a wire so I guess I'll just throw that away so there we go. I've got it crimped now. So now I'm going to get my findings and put them on. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to put my findings on now. I've got some little jump rings here. I think these are about 5 millimeter jump rings. And I've got my links. I'm going to take one of my jump rings. The reason I keep saying, I know I've said it in several videos that I think they're 5 millimeter. I got this huge pack of <laughs> jump rings from Babycraft. And I think they're four, five, six, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten, I think is the sizes, and I think I got these out of this five millimeter uh, part here, so I'm going to take my jump ring here, and I'm going to open it up, and put my leak on, And then I'm going to take my necklace and put it on there. I'll make sure I get my jump ring closed up really well. Now I'm going to take my other, another jump ring and do the same thing on this other side. get my clock jump ring closed back up really well and you can usually feel it when you get it closed and sometimes you can hear it now I'm going to take another jump ring and these little pieces of chain are about two and a half inches each I'm going to open my jump ring and put my chain on there <laughs> Knew I wasn't going to get through without dropping something. Oh, I'm going to put my chain on. I'm trying to hold the jump ring as close to the edge there as I can because these pliers are kind of fat and they get in the way of me getting the link on there. I'm going to close up my jump ring really well. I'm going to take another jump ring and do the same thing on this other side. my chain on put my link on close my jump ring back really well oops <laughs> okay 
Okay, now I'm going to take another five millimeter jump ring and open it up, put it on this end of my chain. My pliers have got magnetized, so my chain's trying to stick to my pliers. Not just trying to stick to my pliers, it is succeeding in sticking to my pliers. See if I can hold it with my hands here and get it on here. There we go. Now I'm going to put my lobster clasp on here. Close my jump ring back really well. Now I have an eight millimeter jump ring. I'm gonna put this chain on here and hope that it doesn't. There we go. I was gonna say hope my pliers. It wasn't gonna stick to my pliers, and it didn't. And this is about an inch, I think, of uh, extender chain here that I'm putting on here. I'll close this back really well. Okay, now hold on. I get my uh, head pin and my back home to make my dangle. I'll be back. Okay, I've got a ball head pin here. Of course, you don't have to have a ball head pin. You use regular head pin. I just like to use the ball head pins. I've got a little black back home that I dug out of my bead soup. <laughs> I'm going to put that on here. And I'm going to go to the, take my tweezer pliers and I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend the pin over the wire or over the pliers at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the pin, round nose pliers facing me. I'm going to take the wire or take the wire and bend it back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Hold on tight. Take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers, and I almost forgot. I know y'all was watching me. <laughs> I forget this all the time. I'm going to open my loop a little bit and put my extender chain on here. I forget that all the time. But I caught myself this time. I didn't forget. I don't think I opened it enough, though. There we go. Now I'm going to close my loop back. Now I'm going to hold on to the loop, try to hold my chain out of the way. I'm going to bring my wire down a little bit here. Take my other pair of bent chain nose pliers. And I'm going to start to wrap. I want to get that first wrap good and tight. And then I'm going to wrap until there's no more room to wrap. Now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. Make sure I don't cut the wrong piece of wire. <laughs> now I'm going to take these crimping pliers and I use the part at the end there with the little half circles on each side. And I use that to tuck in my burr that's left when I cut off the wire. Be careful when you do this, though, these little, oh, well, <laughs> I said you have to be careful when you do this. <laughs> uh, my extender chain link fell off my extender chain. I don't know how that happened. Okay, let's see if we can do this a different way. I'll take my, the end of my extender chain that's left. I think this necklace is plenty long. It won't matter that there's one link missing of my extender chain that I had. The only reason I don't like to open these links, the way they're shaped, they slip on me. I think it would help if I had some flat nose pliers. And of all the pliers I have accumulated over the years, I have never had any flat nose pliers. 
I'm going to try to get it open here and I put my little dangle on here. And I know y'all were so proud of me because I remembered <laughs> to wrap it directly to the extender chain and then I broke my extender chain. Hey, that just keeps slipping on me like that. I think I need some flat nose pliers. Let's close that back up. Make sure it's closed up really well. Okay, so there. We've got a little dangle. It took some work, but we've got a little dangle. So, that's my necklace all done. Let me get it together here. There's my necklace. So now hold on. Let me get my stuff to make my earrings. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to make a little earring now. And I changed my mind. I was going to use an eye pin for the top part of this. But I've decided to use a piece of my 22 gauge German style wire instead. I can maneuver it better than I can an eye pin. So, especially because I want to make a wrap loop. So I'm going to take my ball head pin. And I'm going to put on my bead cap. And my barrel bead and another bead cap. And I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend over at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Round nose pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Hold on tight. Take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Now I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring the wire down a little bit. I'm going to take my other pair of bent chain nose pliers and start my wrap. Make sure to get that first wrap good and tight. And I'm going to wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take my crimping pliers in the little burr now I'm going to take my piece of my 22 gauge German style wire and I'm going to take my pliers this is about a four inch piece of wire I'm going to go down about an inch and a half bend over at a 90 degree angle take my round those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend bend the wire back until the until it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until it's centered over the wire. I take my pliers and I'm going to open up my loop. Put the thread on this little dangle that I made. Close my loop back. I bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this part down a little bit and then wrap it around the longer piece of wire about three times. I take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take another bead cap, my Jasper bead cap. I take my pliers, straighten up my loop down here. Go to the tip of the pliers, bend over at a 90 degree angle. Like I, I got that, I don't think that's facing the same way as the bottom loop. I'll have to probably work with that here in a minute. Now I'm going to put my Round those pliers in the crook of the bend. 
Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. My bent chain nose pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring my wire down a little bit. Take my other pair of bent chain nose pliers. And start my wrap. Make sure to get that first wrap good and tight. Wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take my crimping pliers, tuck in my little burrs. Now I've got a, a little four millimeter jump ring. Open it up. A thread on the top of my ring, which is my jasper bead, and my link. Close it back up. And I'm going to take my ear wire and decide if I need a jump ring here, and I don't think I do. So I'm going to open my ear wire, thread on my link, close my ear wire back. There's my little earring. So I'm going to make my other earring off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, there's my very, very simple necklace and pair of earrings made with the, some of the products I got in my most recent BB Craft order. The really very simple and easy necklace to make, even though I had a little bit of a snafu there when my extender chain fell apart. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'll leave the link to the BB Craft homepage in the description box below. In case you want to make an order with them and that coupon code will save you 10% off your order. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.